Cheers. Cheers. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode number six. Six. Yay. I can't believe it's already been six episodes. This is flying by. I guess it must be fun. <laughs> it is a hoot. It's always fun when we're drinking with one another virtually for the first time this go around. Yes. And uh, for all you listeners out there, we are on Zoom right now because we are going to be interviewing a very special guest from one of our first favoritist wine shops in Venice. We're going to be interviewing Veronica from Lincoln Fine Wines. Whoop, whoop. Veronica should be hopping on any minute now. Mm-hmm. We'll cut to her interview when she hops on. But Lincoln has a special place in both of our hearts. They had weekly tastings. I mean, you know, if you're listening to this, this is pandemic, light at the end of the tunnel. It's yes. near. But pre-pandemic, oh my gosh, the tastings there, they were awesome. It was like our weekly Wednesday thing. So fun. And also one of the first local wine shops where um, they were stocking natural wine. And so we kind of, our journey with natural wine, I would say, kind of began with uh, us shopping there at Lincoln Fine Wine as well. Totally, totally. And um, I think this is really, really pertinent to a lot of the listeners or anybody who owns a wine shop out there. Lincoln Fine Wines is a traditional wine shop. And Veronica, who, I mean, I'm stoked to have her on for a number of reasons. First, she's our first woman. Mm-hmm. So I can't wait to have her first, uh, her second interviewee, um, first woman. But um, she is the whole reason why Lincoln has natural wine. It was a traditional wine shop. Natural wasn't on the radar. She brought it onto yeah. their radar and it's taken off. She can tell us all the deets, but it's like, I mean, there's some cool facts. I think it's one of their highest grossing regions of their wine store to them. Totally, it's it's very cool, very inspiring. Started as, you know, just a tiny little shelf in the corner of natural wine. And now they've got a whole entire corner of the store dedicated to it. And they just launched their first natural wine only club, which is also very exciting. So she's Ooh. gonna be on short here. I might happen for that. You can believe it. Yes, we are. Well, so I want to hear what you're drinking, Miss. Where Miss and I aren't together. We're she's in Hermosa. I'm in Venice Beach. I uh, know, hurt, but at um, least I am drinking Love uh, by Brock Sellers, and it is a red blend. I believe it's mostly Carignan, but it's got some Syrah and Valdez in there. It's beautiful. It's just it's delightful. I mean, it, it's it's really great. Whenever I just had some Thai food for dinner before hopping on and it paired nicely with that. And it's also just lovely to sip on its own. It's very well balanced, um, acidity, tannins, all the things you want with a little bit of funk, which of course we have to have that in our, in our naturals. We've definitely given that bottle some love on our Instagram stories. Yes, it's one of our favorites and you can't beat the price, the price point. Um, it's under $20 normally. Uh, I grabbed this from Lincoln Fine Wines and, and they usually have that stocked there. It's just yeah, really they have nice. stuff. What about you, babe? I am drinking the super fun. I mean, if this is a natural, I don't know what is. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of elements. Orange, sparkling, Greek, in a short squat 500 milliliter bottle. I mean. That's a cute bottle. Oddity. We have, <laughs> <laughs> seriously. And this guy, I mean, it rings in at an amazing price. It's like $13.99. I mean, yeah, it's, you're, it's a 500 milliliter bottle, but. It's not for your grandma or your neighbor next door because it kind of is. It's like it has a sour beer or a cidery. Um, definitely has some barnyard going on. I love it. You either love or hate this one. Some people say Ew. puke and stinky socks. And I say <laughs> yum. Like I've been transported to Greece. I'm on the beach. It's off dry, yeah. so just a titch of sweetness. It's made from this native indigenous white grape. I forgot, look at my note, Dabina. It's called Dabina. Hey. I never had Dabina on its own, but obviously it has some maceration with the skins, hence why it's an orange wine. We'll be doing an orange wine episode here shortly, so more to follow on that if you're wondering what orange wine is all about. But I love it. It's um, 500 milliliters, so you can drink the whole thing by yourself and not feel too terrible about it. Got this at Thanks moment. for sharing. So Veronica's here. I'm going to let her in. Here we go. Perfect. We'll give her a moment here. Veronica. Hello, hello. Hi, can you hear Hi. us? 
<laughs> perfect, perfect. How are you doing? You look beautiful. Oh, thank you. You guys do too. <laughs> <laughs> I love the headband and I feel like I haven't seen you in so long. It's just I know, your face. <laughs> I know. COVID, COVID has been rough. I feel like, you know, even Remington, even though he lives like down the street, I still just kind of see him through the window sometimes. So through the, through the window with my mask on. It's a quick, I mean, you guys, we can get in, into it, but I mean, business I think is is great. The pandemic was nice for wine shops and that just meant you were really, really busy. But I see you with a mask on and grab my big case and, and then I run away. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Bring, bringing the juice to the people, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, we are so excited you're joining us. Um, you are the second person we've had on the podcast, so thank you so much. And you're, and you're the first woman in line to to do an interview with us, so we're so excited. excited. It was um, we're yeah, filming guys. during International Women's Day week, yep. so it's only fitting we have our first woman interviewing. So, um, <laughs> let's do a little virtual cheers. Yeah, virtual cheers. Thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah. I feel like we should have a little background <laughs> music, yeah. <laughs> We, we'll, we'll have our um we pay somebody big bucks to do the editing uh -huh. so. oh okay cool 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 <laughs> okay, Kendra. Uh, but we kind of introed our wines i was i'm drinking the really fun the, the palo uh oh, a little palo caricio yeah a little greek and I'm a the little wine that cut by brock sellers one of our faves yeah that's definitely one of our top sellers for sure Mm -hmm. uh, I'm drinking a mystery wine. Uh, you guys will get to try this at the Natural Wine Club uh, oh. next month. So, <laughs> yes. Um, I don't want to tell you what it is yet, but you'll be able to to try it in in just a couple of weeks. So, nice. I love that. It's I love delicious. The in my, uh, in it's my wine box. <laughs> definitely, uh, it's definitely on the the wild side. Okay. Cool. That's why we signed up. We we touched on that briefly. That uh, that you just launched a. What do you call? Are you calling it the Natty Corner Club or? Yep. Yeah, as an ode to the Natty Corner. Uh, <laughs> yep. The sign um, that you, on yep. there. For that was uh, yeah. That I just kind of took over the store. Um, so I was like, we were thinking about like, what's what are some kind of cute, you know, catchy names we could name it? And I was just like, let's just name it the Natty Corner Club. You know, everybody was like, oh, that natural corner, the Natty Corner. Mm -hmm. That's um, so yeah, I'm really really excited for you guys to um, be able to to try those. Those fun, fun wild wines for sure. We no can't way. wait. <laughs> well, let's hear about you, Veronica. You're the star of the show, and we want to know. I don't know. Before Lincoln, like you know, that's how we all met you. How did Veronica like? How did you dip your toe into wine? Like, what got you into the industry, or what got you interested? Yeah. So. Um, my parents immigrated from Mexico up to Napa, actually, um, to work as farm workers in the vineyards. And my family and the rest of my family, all, we all kind of just settled down in Napa. And uh, my parents eventually kind of worked their way up through the system. And my father ended up becoming a vineyard manager for a lot of really famous wineries in Napa. Oh, wow. And um, I kind of grew up in, you know, I was born and raised in Napa. So I kind of grew up with wine my entire life um mainly more the viticultural side just because my dad would take me out to the vineyards you know when he needs to do work or my mom and I would go take my dad lunch on the weekends and we kind of spend the the day out there as everybody was working um so I kind of grew up that way around wine um I never really knew if I wanted to pursue a career in that and honestly being in the bubble that Napa is I kind of thought that everybody grew up this way you know like <laughs> When yeah. you're little, you don't think that, you know, <laughs> everybody grew up in this beautiful place that grows apparently amazing wine. Um, so uh, eventually I went off to college. I went to UC Davis, um, which, as some of you guys may know, specialized in enology and their oh, yeah. wine program is amazing. Um, I didn't go in as an enology major, um, but I definitely uh, took some courses and I was always really interested just because I science and wine it's it all comes wow. together so I mean, that's like um, a yeah course for me <laughs> <laughs> they didn't offer that at the university of st thomas in st paul minnesota <laughs> yeah yeah um and you know the i eventually started working at mandavi um because mandavi has a really great partnership with davis there's like a okay. whole performing arts program that's like named after 
Margaret and Michael Mondavi and the entire family um, and Robert Mondavi, of course, the Robert. Um, So I started working for Mondavi and uh, worked at the winery there. And it's definitely more um, of traditional winemaking, classic Napa Valley Cabernet is definitely what you're known for. Um, And eventually moved down here to come to UCLA um, and I needed a job. As uh, moving down here. <laughs> yep. And I was like, you know what? I think I want to kind of get back into wine again as I'm, you know, doing school because it's something that I love that I'm passionate about. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to need some time to kind of relax, you know, from school load. Totally. Um, so I started kind of looking around my area and found Lincoln Fine Wines and just kind of walked in and said, hey, are you guys hiring? And they were like, yeah, sure. And <laughs> that's Perfect. Why I'm working here. <laughs> when was that? I love that. Yeah, this was uh, in 2017. I've been working here for almost uh, four years now. That's amazing. It's crazy how time flies. I'm like, four years. Yeah. Oh, I, I love that background story. And and yeah, let's jump right into to Lincoln Fine Wines and, and yeah. your role there and kind of how you took a very like classic wine shop and sort of introduced, introduced natural wine that was first, you know, like, a little bookshelf and now a whole corner and, and how did that kind of how did that happen yeah um i mean lincoln fine wines hawk the owner he's always had such a great selection of wines um mm-hmm. liz kelso and kimmy who were the um the main wine buyers when i started working here they did such an amazing job at bringing in really cool fun kind of off the beaten path wines um kimmy had worked in new york and all parts of the world so she was very worldly and familiar with wines from all over the world um she's the one that actually introduced me into uh the whole orange wine movement because she's like oh, really? hey, girl, this has been going on in new york for years now we're just catching up over here in la <laughs> wow. yeah. this is this is one of the uh, co-owners of lincoln kimmy but she was uh one of the main buyers when i started wow. working here um wow. i don't know if you guys remember she had the curly red hair super super mm-hmm. knowledgeable um shout out to Kimmy and and Liz Kelso they're amazing um and yeah they they always you know I always tasted with them whenever people would come and bring wines in and I always noticed that my palate always was more geared to kind of more off the beaten path wines too I was always really interested in Jura and the Loire Valley Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. Eastern European wines uh which happened to all be like natural wines And it wasn't until Raw Wine Fair of 2017 uh, that I was like, wow, this is a whole world that's about to really hit and take over LA. Oh, yeah. I mean, and at that time, Raw Wine Fair 2017, it was it was a good size event, but it was nothing to the size of what it is now. Yeah, we Uh, saw you there in 19. Yeah, we were at Raw Wine Fest 19. Yeah. That was our first and only one. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I hope to go kind to many. Kind of blew our minds. We walked in and we're like, did we die? Yeah, it's <laughs> a mecca for us. Yeah, it's definitely the mecca. And uh, you get to meet such amazing producers. And, you know, just, I was really just fell in love with the stories of all these winemakers that are just super small production, you know, making wines in their backyard and their ideologies as to what they want to you know where they want to take wine and kind of bring it back to the roots as to where wine really started um which is like super non-interventional you know because people didn't have money to to put in a bunch of chemicals and buy a bunch of technology back in the day so yeah Yeah. I was really uh intrigued by that and I came back and I was like hey Hawk I really want to start you know carrying more of these wines can you please kind of help out a girl over here you know yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) gave me a small little shelf on the store he's like let's start off with like 10 wines you okay know, this goes um and then did you have like some of your customers or your regulars like talking about it too being like Veronica like can you get this in or that in and yeah yeah I feel like a lot of our customers they like to travel the world um which is really awesome I know that you guys have been to some trips together um you talk about your trip in Spain, which yes. I, don't know, I bet. <laughs> um, so you can everyone, come with us next time. <laughs> yeah. So everyone's like, "Hey, I just got back from Paris, and what's up with these, you know, Ganevat wines? What's up with these, you know, what's going on here?" And um, I was like, "I know. I want to bring more of that stuff in, you know." Um, and Liz and Kimmy were always like, "Yeah, let's do it. Like those are the wines that we like to drink too." Okay. 
like, yeah, we, we like to sell these wines, but on my off time, I like to drink these kind of wines, you know? Yeah. So, um, we, they eventually started selling out so fast that we couldn't keep that little shelf stock. So he's like, okay, fine. You can have two shelves, <laughs> you know, three, three, four. And then I eventually just like cleared out that whole corner and just made it the natural wine corner. <laughs> totally. Which That's is- amazing. I think somewhere, somewhere around shelf three, I think is when we discovered it and we would tell our friends, like, okay, go into Lincoln Fine Wine. If Veronica is not there, just take a left, take yeah. another left, go to the corner. <laughs> There's a couple shelves there and that's, yeah. where, well, that's where you want to be. <laughs> totally. I describe it to my mom as countless number of friends. Left, yeah. immediately left, find yeah. an attic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a fan of these wines. Like I... Yes, I, I like to learn a lot about them, but I was also a fan. Like, this is what I was drinking, you know? So mm-hmm. I wanted to bring more of the stuff I was passionate about um, into the store. And it, now it's the most profitable uh, section in the entire store. Wow, that's really so cool. France. Um, so we're really excited. And I mean, I don't know if you guys, I've told you guys, but we're expanding the store. So it's going to be a wine bar slash retail. What? Store. what? That's amazing news. Right now, it's going to be epic. Uh, So that building, like, that you share a wall with? Yeah, it's the one that used to be the thrift store on the corner. Um, So we take an entire space, and that will be the wine bar slash retail shop on this side. Wow. The best news ever. And I want you to have half of the wall space. So um, I'm really excited to be able to expand that and just bring more yummy natty juice to the people you know yes. <laughs> grape juice in its naked form yeah bring that juice. Raw stuff in you know <laughs> that's amazing it's going to take the tastings to uh, the next level i mean i remember some of the natty tastings and even some of the cult you know just like traditional wine tastings that whenever uh, the weekly ones you would have like it would get crammed in there it was like oh, yeah you pack it in and it, it, it was a great thing yeah. um but to have some more space and to have a wine bar, that's going to be amazing. Yeah, Rem- Remington and I are just going to live there. You'll never get rid of this now. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, you know, having those tastings uh, where you, you know, even you guys, you got to meet a lot of the distributors and the owners and winemakers. Um, you know, thank you guys for like supporting our tastings. I feel like um, it really helped the natural wine program grow here because Hawk saw how many more people came to the natural wine tasting. Mm any other uh tasting so yeah um, I guess it's kind of like a it's a like I don't know how to put my finger on it it's like a little culty in a way it's <laughs> it's a wine. movement it's a movement for sure <laughs> we yeah. we came to kind of late like late ish but still right before like, it became like now. that's that's yeah. what matters is you're here <laughs> yeah but, um, one road or another we arrived <laughs> it's almost like when you discover your favorite alternative band when you're in high school and this has the weirdest ass name and your parents are like what are you listening to you're just like you won't even you don't understand yeah. we want to tell everybody about it we want them to understand but it almost feels like that and so <laughs> when we found like our favorite wine shops and they were having like they would bring in a natural distributor like an amy atwood or something like that um it, it was it's kind of culty in that way everybody would who loves that band like you follows it in a way and hears that they're going to be in town and we would all show up I feel yeah. like that's why the tastings were so fun yeah and like it, I was just always so surprised how people came from you know the valley and south okay. bay and you know long beach area they'd come all the way up here because they're like hey we you know we don't have as many tastings like this and in, in yeah. my um, you know, the east side of LA has always been popping and they, they, oh, man. Up, but <laughs> we have a ton, like, so man, much. I'm west side. I love being by the beach, but, um, if you guys weren't here, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> that's a big slice about moving in. Yeah. And there's such great shops on the west side, you know, we got like Bar and Garden and Stanley's mm-hmm. and been on Rose down the street. So True. we're we're so happy to have more uh, more of our community you know out here on this side of town it is really exciting to see to see like all the different favorite little spots on the west side kind of getting stoked and and uh super excited about natural wine and everyone's kind of like yay (laughs) i know we are (laughs) 
<laughs> no, I, I really like, um, you know, the energy of, of people in the community and um, it, it kind of does feel like a community, you know, like, like you said, oh, yeah. culty, uh, but it's something to bond over, like <laughs> your favorite band yeah. or your favorite I'm, one. You know, new members all the time. Uh, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely, it's such a positive energy and, um, you know, we try to keep like a snob free environment. Yeah. Um, and just more of like an educational side of things, which um, totally. we're all always learning. You know, I'm always learning all my stuff. You know, my coworkers are always learning. Mm. Everyone. Yeah. Like, I had to Google. This is the main white grape and this is called Dabina. Dabina, Dabina. And I, I mean, I've never heard of it before. So, I mean. You should, have, you should Google what Palio Caricio means. <laughs> Uh, you want to do you want to share with me or is this going to be i want to know tell us it's uh you should you should look it up it's okay. uh it's let me look it up it's, uh, it's a little inappropriate but it's it's hilarious <laughs> now, now i'm so excited yeah you i mean we are it. we are called the naked wine podcast so sometimes we can get a little inappropriate yeah you know you you, you got it you're drinking wine you know it's <laughs> All right, this is not the Joe Rogan podcast, so <laughs> don't, have, don't have somebody Googling this and then informing me. All I got from Googling this was old fashioned. Hmm, did you spell it uh, right? Yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> uh, uh, um, eh, I don't know. We'll look it up and uh, post it on, on IG afterwards. Yeah, look it up. It's totally. I'm excited to see. That's too funny. Although I was hoping to see Remington's reaction. <laughs> no. All I got was old fashioned, but I, I assume that it means something a little bit more than that. But yeah, we, something a little we, need, more the, we need the Urban Dictionary. <laughs> yeah, go to UrbanDictionary.com. The Greek, the Greek Urban Dictionary. <laughs> check it out. I'll definitely check it out. Oh man. So um, and then your Natural Club kicks off. April. I mean, I'm sure that's probably no sense in even promoting that because I'm sure it's full. Um, I have about six spots left at this <laughs> moment. Okay. So <laughs> wow, that's, we, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, we we posted it on our Instagram like six days ago or five days ago, um, and of course, immediately, you know, we've had a lot of people asking for it, um, and luckily, it's kind of chilled out a little bit you know the pandemic we kind of got our little groove going now so um this was originally supposed to launch last year but because of covid um you know things kind of just went off a different way so things happen sure excited to to bring this to you guys and uh it's it's gonna be really really awesome yay well we are stoked yeah you guys are gonna try some really cool stuff um yeah, it starts April 1st. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm stoked. What about like trends that you saw early on? Because you got, I guess you got into natural wine like a, a couple years before us, like that you saw that that may still be here, that kind of faded out. Or what do you see that's like, because I don't know. I feel like orange wine is kind of in its moment or may, it, it's not like these things are going to go away. Mm-hmm. But like um, pet nets, and then we're we're the biggest thing last year, and now you're seeing like everybody makes something with a crown cap on it. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you what do you see like what do you see trend wise like early on in the natural wine movement? That's like that like um, that came and went, or like that's here to stay kind of thing. Yeah, I think that what one of the things that really attracted me to natural wine was the fact that there wasn't. A lot of rules um yeah. there was people that were just co-fermenting and yeah like, throwing on a bottle cap on a wine that wasn't sparkling and um you know just doing a lot of really cool stuff doing hops infused wines which uh like uh field recordings they do like a hop yeah. infused which one half. delicious i love beer so that was really cool for i me. think we've had that one before remy which one's it co- what's it called uh it's called oh, it's something it's called something hop um, it's like field recordings and it's their pet net and oh, yeah, yeah. they use it with hops and it's really really good it is good it's if you good. like hoppy like hoppy it doesn't stuff. surprise <laughs> yeah. um so you know there are some trends that i've kind of seen come and go um something that i do really appreciate as i wouldn't say it's a trend but i definitely feel like a lot of more winemakers are doing it um is using clear glass bottles um mm-hmm. i love that you know they make these wines with these beautiful colors yeah like that you know 
and it's maybe not a wine that's necessarily meant to age, which is why it's in a clear bottle. Um, but okay. I love that they're showcasing the colors and um, I feel like as a consumer standpoint, um, a lot of our customers get really attracted. You know, they, they kind of oh. look at the wall of all these beautiful colors. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, I got this crazy, crazy one today from you. Oh yeah, yeah. like your mouth kind of like water is just like looking at these colors, yeah. right? You're like, oh, this probably is so juicy and delicious. <laughs> no, I totally agree. Um, we love this one starry night and it's just got this beautiful like purpley pink color. Yeah. See, like that, but like you put it against the light and it's like neon. Like it's like Remington a beautiful- is holding up for the listeners out there. Remington's holding up a, a beautiful I call it bottle. Love by uh, Tessier. She's um, actually a female winemaker too. She's awesome. Very I mean, this cool. is, how could you not buy this? Like, no <laughs> love. It's like a Katy Perry song in yeah. white form. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Firework. Yeah, it's a white. <laughs> And red co-ferment, like you said. I think it's Riesling. Very cool. Yeah, Riesling, Trousseau, Mavedra. So, like, you're right. To, to that note, like, no rules. Like, I'm sure most everybody's probably consumed a co-ferment, but maybe just not have known it at this point. But that's basically white grapes and red grapes together. Um, either co-fermenting together or... We're bringing them after together bring them back together once they're finished um which is somewhat of a traditional style of winemaking in like some of the rhone parts in in france um oh, really? not, uh, from before so um it's definitely like something that's been expanded far beyond what they do which is which is really cool but um as far as trends too i feel like initially there was a, like a lot of like organic on the label or natural oh, yeah. on the label and since there wasn't a lot of uh, rules or certification, I mean, there is like the organic certification that you can get on your wines. Um, yeah. But yeah. And in some part, it was more of like a marketing tactic. Um, right. And, totally. And it does, you know, it does help the consumer, which I totally see that side of it. Um, but also, I mean, I'm really hoping that people can find stores where they can go up to, you know, a wine, their local wine store and talk to somebody about how this wine is yeah. made, you know, instead because- of like, you're you're super you're super intimidating uh, for people just listening. <laughs> no, I'm just, no. I'm just kidding. You're like you're, you're so the best, Veronica. I think we, you we always send so, every, we send everyone to you because you're the best. <laughs> oh, thank you. So approachable. You always have a smile on your face, and you have great recommendations. And I I guess that's a, a tip for everybody, just in general. Like if they're intimidated by wine don't because there's no wrong answer on how it tastes there's no wrong answer on what you like to drink and um, find a shop find an employee ask a lot of questions yeah and there's no such thing as dumb questions or too many Mm -hmm. questions um i feel like you know my coworkers and myself we all love to educate people on what we know you know because we're also being educated every day so um like yeah. I said, snob free energy, you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, just look at like natural wine um, writers these days. Like, you know, we've moved away from W set. Mm-hmm. You can still describe a wine as like stewed dark red fruits, but like natural wine writers that you read in like Bon Appetit or New York Mag will describe it as like a toaster strudel mixed yeah. with. Um, <laughs> high sea fruit punch like so there's no wrong answer on how to describe the wine you like drinking yep and that's also actually a trend that i'm happy is kind of going away is you know people Mm -hmm. depending on points or certain writers uh, points because i feel like it started just to kind of make every wine taste the same because everybody wanted to get these really high points from this like from robert parker or james suckling um, which are amazing people in the wine industry but obviously a lot of wineries wanted to appeal to them and it kind of started swaying the, the wine industry into just making wines that mm-hmm. they knew that Robert and would rate Jeff highly. Made. So uh, yeah. I'm really happy yes. that that's kind of being calmed down a little bit. And obviously yeah. those writers are, are very um, admired in the wine industry, but I am kind of happy it's starting to mellow out a little bit. <laughs> no, that, that's a very good point. Well, I have a question. So um, Veronica, what, what producers are you excited about right now? like distributors, importers um, that you're super pumped on? Who are you kind of like looking at? Yeah, um, I think that for initially when I first started the natural wine program, 
Um, I was really into the French producers. Um, obviously, we all went through like our Beaujolais stage, right? Where you like discover how delicious Gamay is. <laughs> yeah, like bang for your buck too. Uh, yeah, and like Northern Italian, uh, Slovenian, orange wine producers. Um, you know, you got to give it up to, you know, the classic Georgian styles um, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. all that. Yes, and Greece, you know, yeah. uh, where originally wine came from. Uh, so... I was always really into that side of, of natural wine initially. Um, but honestly, right now I'm so excited about what's happening here in the U S mm -hmm. um, I feel, and even just North America in general, um, yeah. including Mexico and Canada. Um, yeah. I'm so excited as to what's happening here. Um, I feel like there's so many amazing domestic producers now and Mexican and Canadian producers. Um, I just had this like fantastic Canadian Kev Bronk from Celestia. Really? Um, and it's wow. absolutely delicious. Um, hopefully, you guys will get to taste it in the wine club in the future too. Um, I'm planning it on featuring it there. Uh, of course, there's like amazing things happening down in Mexico. Um, of course, we all know Beachy, right? Like, yeah. awesome, what else? Beachy. What else besides Beachy? That's like all I know from Mexico. So there's a producer um, that I just brought in, um, also from Mexico. She's actually a female winemaker. Um, gosh, what's her? I think her name is Lulu. Um, and she worked in Bordeaux for a long time and then came back to Mexico and started producing like classic Bordeaux style wines, but also her as like a wine nerd, she's like, yeah, but I want to create kind of crazy, you know, kind of more natural stuff. Um, so yeah. now she makes, uh, kind of like nattier juice, um, her orange wine. I cannot even find it. It's, it's mainly just stays huh. in people, but I just brought in her Barbera, um, and it's absolutely delicious. Um, Ooh. So I would definitely look there. Uh, there's a producer named Vena Cava, uh, also down in Mexico. Um, they produce also amazing natural wine. If you ever uh, visit their winery, it's fantastic. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like Mad Max meets like, you know, Venice. You've been in their winery, been in their, <laughs> their winery down there in Mexico? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's so cool. You wow. guys should visit it. Um, but, yeah, we'll cool. have to put that on the list for sure. You know, I know I'm interjecting here, but and this is going to be impossible to do in just like two, three minutes. But give us like, I don't know anything about the wine making regions of Mexico. Is there a primary wine making region? And if so, like, where is that? What does that look like? Yeah, there's um, there's several different main areas. Uh, they grow wine in Querétaro, which is um, kind of a eastern state. Uh, they grow wines um, in Valle de Guadalupe, which is in Baja, which is, kind of, I feel like we're mainly LA people have probably visited because it's a lot, yeah. more, it's closer. It's maybe like two, three hours away. Mm -hmm. um, and Valle de Guadalupe has really taken off. Um, I think just because of proximity to the US and it's beautiful. Um, a lot of people already visit Ensenada and Rosarito and all those beach mm -hmm. cities. So they're like, oh, let's go wine tasting down the street, you know, down the yeah. street. Um, so those would be like the main areas, um, I would say, okay. uh, but wine, Me Mexico has been producing wine for, for a long time. I love that. I'm excited to, to check out some of the things you just mentioned. Yeah. If you want to take like a little weekend trip, definitely go down to Valle de Guadalupe. They're, they're really, really cool. Okay. So how it's far like, past Tijuana is that? Um, I would say about an hour, oh. an hour to an hour and a half. I don't yeah. know why we haven't done this, Kendra. Yeah, I mean, I'm already like, what do we have going on next weekend? Can we go? <laughs> yeah, just get like a bomb ass Airbnb down there yeah. and just drink. And there's such cool breweries too and such amazing restaurants. Um, Fun. Some places you guys should visit. That would be amazing. Yeah. We're in. I think. Um, I may or may not already have the calendar up here. <laughs> <laughs> You said it best. North America is definitely something to be excited about. I feel like one good rec we gave a lot of our listeners was if you're not at a place where you can find natural wine, like stick with old world. You know, if 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 they definitely don't have natural wine, try something French or Italian because most likely it's going to be made kind of that minimal intervention style. But yeah. there are umpteen million. Like if you're in, in the natural scene and you start looking at not only the West Coast, but like Virginia, Texas, All of North America, Vermont. There's a ton of new school, a lot of new school, some good old school like staples in California, like Katuri and 
and a few others. Um, but um, there, there's a lot to be excited about in California, especially. Yeah, for sure. I feel like one of the producers that really made me excited in California initially uh, was uh, Steve Mathiason and his winery up in ah, Sweet. Um, love. He, he's kind of always thought outside of the box and he's always right. been one of my favorite winemakers. Um, I mean, he makes very traditional styled natural wines and then he makes kind of like some more kind of crazier stuff too but um he's just awesome and i love what he kind of started in napa and um you know they started growing kind of more off the beaten path varietals as well uh which is great cool so So we're coming down to our our last few minutes here um just because with zoom we're on a little bit of a time limit and i want to make sure we shout out lincoln so Lincoln Fine Wines, it's um, the place to go if you are in that area. And Veronica is the woman um, on Instagram. I believe you guys are Lincoln Fine Wine, correct? Correct. Yeah. At Lincoln and, uh, Fine Wine. Um, LincolnFineWine.com is the website. Where else? How else can we support you guys? Uh, I mean, if you want to join our wine club, even if you don't enjoy natural wines, um, I do also do the more traditional uh, conventional wine club as well. Uh, which we also get to explore a lot of really cool regions. Um, so last month was Mexico. Yeah, we just did the Mexican wine, and before that was wines from Lebanon. Um, you know, so we we always like to get you guys to try new stuff too. Um, and just you know, place place your order online. You can pick up curbside, um, and then eventually when we open up, you know, come and have a drink at our wine bar. We will be there, and we will bring all our friends and hopefully some some new listeners. I mean, that's like biking distance from me, so it's really dangerous. <laughs> but I'm very, very excited. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for everything. I can't wait for the day. I know, me too. <laughs> I can't wait for the day when we can go to an in-person indoor wine tasting again. I know. I'm but starting that's... to see the light, though. You know, I feel like we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, so... I completely agree. Yeah. Well, Veronica, thank you so much. I don't want us to get booted off here because I want to make sure I save the recording, but um, you are amazing. And this was so fun. So fun just to get to see you because I miss you. And also for all of your wisdom um, that you've imparted to our listeners. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. And, and uh, you know, I'm here to help whenever you guys need anything. <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Peace. Yes. Here, go home, people. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Guys. Veronica. Yeah. Bye.